back, everyone. Uh, we're working on our mobile first design for our WordPress child theme. It was the HTML5 reset, and we've applied some bootstrap navbar. And I want to talk about just uh, some of the concepts on mobile first design, but also looking at styling our navbar. So I got some concepts I'm going to cover in some steps. Now, this may take more than one video to cover. Uh, the following concepts are as follows. This is what we're going to do. Uh, first of all, I just want to make sure we go over what is responsive design, what uh, what that's about. Um, I want to cover breakpoints. Um, breakpoints are how you create a responsive design. And then I want to talk about the difference between responsive design just in general and mobile first. What, what makes mobile first unique from just standard responsive design? Um, then I want to talk about vertical nav bars and then horizontal nav bars. And um, after that, we'll look at some. We'll we'll be using some advanced selectors to be able to to fine tune exactly what it is that we want to do. Okay, the steps of what we're going to do to do this. Now, in the first video, I covered loading up Bootstrap, um, and then um, we also created a navigation style sheet and loaded it. So you want to go back to the previous video if you're not sure how to do that in a WordPress child theme. And then we're going to add some comments into our style sheets. Uh, we need to clarify to help us do the mobile first design. Then um, in our test browser where we're testing out our theme, we're going to make it as narrow as it can be because we want it. We want to design the mobile first. We're going to open up our developer tool. Um, it, while it's narrow, it's probably a good idea to just undock the developer tool, move it to the side so that we can use it to experiment and play around with our styles. Um, we're going to figure out where that first break point is where we can fit the entire nav bar. So we're going to check that first. And then we're going to undo, when we're in the mobile and we're in the narrow width, we're going to undo any of our floated links. Okay. Once we've done that, we're going to move that floating of the links to the first break point. Okay. And then that will make it more mobile first. We're on the mobile sites. Your nav bar will just all take up the width of the screen and sort of expand down. But then when we get a wider screen, we'll have a horizontal nav bar by floating those list items. And then uh, we're going to hide all nested links because that just makes too big of a nav bar. And then we'll animate those nested links. So when you hover over the list item, it'll just kind of pop out. So that's what we're going to do, and it may take us a couple of videos to get through it all, but that's our game plan for today. Okay, so we are in the child theme test folder. You'll note I'm in the HTML5 reset child. I've got the navigation style sheet open. I also want to open up the style sheet, so I'm going to just double click on there and open that up. Let's go ahead and launch this. Okay, so uh, the next thing I was going to have you do is talk about some comments. But before we do, I want to cover some of the concepts. Uh, what's up with responsive design? Well, let me give you an example of responsive design. As you resize the browser window, you will see the layout change. So an example of a responsive design is in this wide screen, we have a two-column layout when I highlight it. And when I go narrow, and hide it off the side of the screen apparently, uh, when I go narrow, like so, you'll notice there's not a two column layout. So it responds to the width of the screen. But part of the problem with um, the way sometimes responsive it is how do you design a site for all the different screen widths? How do you go about it? And if you go back to, um, actually, let's not even look here. Let's look at the page here. I told you we're going to go to the narrowest design, and we lost it. Um, hold on a second. I don't know where that thing went. I have double monitor, so it, it does weird things from, from time to time. I'm going to get this as narrow as we can, and then we're going to do, uh, i got to do the control zero to get it. That's normal size. All right, um, so let's open up the developer tools. This is in Chrome. You just type F12. I've already done this before earlier today, and so I'm just going to reposition this so we can see both uh, windows. So on the left, we have the narrowest of narrow screens. And uh, one of the things we want to look at is some of the items in here. For example, the width. I click on here. I have a div with the class of wrapper and container. 
And when I look up here, I see that my container in one of the style sheets has a padding right of 15 pixels, padding left 15 pixels, and a margin right and margin left of auto. Um, now, there is no width applied. So you scroll down and you don't see a width on here, do you? But watch what happens when I make this wider. Suddenly, I got a bigger margin on either side. And if you look at this right here, here we have a breakpoint. So the idea of the breakpoint is this is how we create a responsive design. We choose, uh, we, we choose this uh, at media, and then we choose either minimum width or maximum width. And there's a bunch of other ways we can sort of combine them. But for now, just think about this as saying, well, if the width of the screen is 700, 768 pixels or wider, then the width of the container is going to be 750 pixels, which if you think about it, makes some sense, right? If we have padding right and padding left, each have 15 pixels, you've got to account for that in the width. So a width of 750 plus 30 ends up being 780. So this, it could affect the screen. Okay, so it's, it's helpful to note. So responsive design just means we have breakpoints and at different widths, we have different displays, different layouts. So the big difference is what's the difference between that and mobile first? Well, the idea of mobile first is how do you go about designing a site? Do you start by designing a site to look like this on a wide screen for a desktop? Or do you design for a mobile device? And which one do you do first? So the idea of the mobile first is we start by styling the mobile styles. Now the first thing you're going to notice is this nav bar is kind of a mess in the mobile window. If I had a phone and I had a portrait, which had about a width of something like this, then I'm going to have a kind of a funky nav bar that's hard to really read what's going on. And now I have to compensate for what's going on here. So we have a problem, we got to fix that. Now had this bootstrap nav been set mobile first, it might not have had those floated items. So we're going to have to kind of fix it a little bit. And so what we're going to do is create some breakpoints that start by designing for mobile, and then we'll keep expanding to wider and wider breakpoints as we go. So we're going to add some comments to help guide us. And the first thing we're going to do before we do that is I'd like to figure out like when can I go, uh, when is a good time to add, uh, for example, when can I go to a full size horizontal layout with this menu? So notice as I drag it out, you'll see a little number here on the left will be the, the, the pixels wide. So that's 799. It appears and goes away. So you may or may not see that. And I'm trying to go until page A and B are side by side next to Laura Mipson. And I'm just going to do it a little bit at a time, or maybe a lot. Page A, page B. Now notice we're at 1,000 pixels here, 967, 972. But part of the problem is the width. Remember, we have this width already set at 750 pixels. So we're going to want to move this container, this, this class of container width, we're going to want, need to move that out a little bit or add a breakpoint that makes it like this width when we're a little further out. So let's go ahead and create our styles. So I'm thinking if we didn't have a width of 750, but we had a width of, let's say, 100%. So notice this is why we have the developer tool, because we can test something out before we apply it. Now look at what happens. Page B fits in here. So now we're at 953, 937. Okay, so 925, 929 is roughly where that's happening. So maybe we say a min width of 930. Um, anywhere after this, maybe we want to apply. Actually, we want a we want a width of 100% all the way out. Actually, no, I know what we need to do. We need to figure out the width of this nav bar because that really is going to tell us how wide we can go. So how do we do that? If you look down here, 
Uh, computed, there we go, computed. We want to see what's going on here. So I'm going to highlight over my nav bar. See, ul.nav right there, nav, nav pills, 907 pixels wide. So at 907 pixels wide, we can fit everything on here. Okay, in order to style this, I went ahead and added some comments here as a way of indicating we're doing mobile first design so that any of the mobile styles will go between this comment and this comment. And then this one marks off our first breakpoint we're going to use, which is that minimum uh, minimum width here. So we're going to go ahead and create an uh, at media declaration. At media. And we're going to set the min width. And on here, uh, let's add it at uh, 927 pixels wide. And the reason why we're doing that is we want to account for the fact that there were padding on either side. So we're just going to add an extra 20 pixels there. Um, and so let's just go ahead and uh, code that. And uh, we'll set the div container. We're going to do that on here, div.container. And then on here, we're going to set the width to be, not widows, width to be 100%. Like so. That means until we get to 927 pixel wide browser, it's going to be full width for our container. And then when we get wider, we can now set um, the container's width at an exact number. In this case, we're going to set the width to 910 pixels. Again, you know, the reason why I'm doing 910 instead of 907 is just to account for a little variation, just round it up a little bit, just play it safe. Uh, I'm going to tab this over. Okay, so I think uh, we're ready here to test this out. Let's see what it looks like. Okay, so here we are. We're taking a look at the page. Just hit refresh, resize, and it looks like when we go narrow, uh, let's go a little bit wider, you'll see how now the, the width is, is kicking in. But when we go more narrow, a width of 100% means there's not going to be any scroll bar. And then we'll have to deal with these tabs in just a bit. So now that we have a breakpoint, we have a place now to sort of... Um, we have a place now to deal with our uh, nav bar. And especially because, if you notice, once we got to this breakpoint, we can do our full-on nested rollover kind of uh, horizontal nav bar. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy basically this right here. Actually, I'm just going to go ahead and copy everything. Go to my navigation.css, paste it in, and then just delete my styles inside and move this comment to the top. All right, so here we go. Mobile first design navigation.css. All right, so now what we can do is we can start styling our navigation bar using the same breakpoint and uh, basically creating all of our styles. So, in order to do that, we should go back to our page and go back to mobile first. All right. Um, this is mobile first, right? And we know that these nested links look really weird with all of these drop-down bars and figuring out what level is what. It would be much easier if each of these links took up the full width of the screen. And so we got to figure out why are they not, why are they lining up side by side? And I already know it's because they're being floated. I'm going to click on an item like LI, and the first thing you'll see is this nav pills. LI float left. Okay, well, all I have to do now is remove that from the mobile first design and add it to our first breakpoint. I'm going to go ahead and copy that. And I'm going to paste over here. And instead of float left, I'm going to do float none. And then I'm going to paste inside of here. Actually, let me undo that for a second. I'm going to paste this way, highlight it, tab it over. 
Tabbing is going to be very important when you're using breakpoints so that it's really clear you're inside of one of these breakpoints. So you notice it's a float none on, on portrait, phones, and then it's float left on our medium width styles. Save my changes. Go back and test it out. Now, if they're still floated and it looks like they are, the problem is they're still being floated left. We need to override that style. It was in Bootstrap, but we need to over override it. If you go a little bit further down, you'll see somewhere it was styled and then it got broken. It got overruled. I don't see it, but anyway, let's just fix it. We know that this nav pills is a UL, so we're going to just add UL to it and see if that will trigger and override the parent styles. Hit refresh. Aha, there we go. A little bit easier to tell, right? Okay. Now there are no floated items on our narrow window. And as we go further out, there, we're back to the horizontal layout. So this is not only responsive because it changes, but this is mobile first because we first are going to style mobile. Once we get this working, then we start pulling it out. And you might go at some point, you might think, you know, we're not at the full horizontal list, but maybe we should start floating some items. Maybe we should have some side-by-side -side links, and you might choose to do that. But you always style everything mobile before you start going around. Because if you go way out here and you do some styles, undoing these styles here are really tough to do. you got to choose one way or the other. And I find mobile first is good because mobile first, you can still do typography. You can do a lot of styles. To it. So we're on our way to our mobile first navigation bar. We've got our first step here.